to worship this morning. This is the last Sunday of 2021 when we will have this nine o'clock worship service. So I know for many of you, you really enjoy this special time of the morning. I enjoy this special and more intimate service as well, but we will move to just one worship service that'll be at 11 o'clock, both here in the sanctuary and streamed over YouTube starting next Sunday morning. So it'll be next May probably before we'll have worship at that, maybe Easter, probably on Easter, but next May will be the next time that we regularly have this nine o'clock worship service call your attention to a few things that are there in your bulletin. There is a special insert that talks about next week's congregational meeting that will follow 11 o'clock worship next Sunday. I encourage you to read through the information about that. There's also an announcement in the bulletin about our fourth annual visiting scholar program. For the second year in a row, our visiting scholar will be with us virtually Uh, The committee decided a month or so ago that that might be the safest way instead of bringing somebody here from another part of the country and gathering large groups of people together. So Dr. James Davis of Middlebury College will be with us virtually teaching and preaching. So next Sunday's sermon will be a different experience for us. It's going to be on video on the screen, but that'll be something that we can do now that we wouldn't have been able to do before COVID. So I hope you'll read through that. There's a banner out in the yard. There's information about it on the, on the website as well. We hope that you'll um, participate in that, and I promise you will be stretched in, in learning as we, as we listen and engage with him in two weeks. And I'm going to call on Kim... Are you going to talk now, too? Or were you only going to do it at 11? You want, Well, I can... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> do you want me to just say something? Yes. Okay, I'm just going to say something, and Kim's going to tell us at 11 o'clock. <laughs> so, I want to just let you know a little bit about what's happening with the It Is Time campaign, particularly as it pertains to the manse. For Presbyterians, that's one of those strange Presbyterian words, right? But that's the house where the pastor and his or her family live that is owned by the church. This church owns a, a beautiful little home that's across the church parking lot. You can't see it from the woods, but it's just right across there. Uh, members of this church built that home in 1961, and this church has lovingly cared for it over all of this time. It is the first part of the building of the It Is Time campaign. Construction has already begun, or expansion of the manse has already begun. That's being led by Terry Lentz, who is a member of this church and his construction company. He has been very generous to the church in that, proje- in that project, and we are very grateful to him for that. This expansion will include about adding about 750 across the back of the house and adding a two-car garage that replaces a single-car garage that was there before. In addition, once my family and I move out, which is happening on Wednesday, so you can say a prayer for us <laughs> right now, because if you walked over there, you would see mostly boxes. Some are full and some are still flat. We are, we are working on that process. We will move to a rental home in the Green Hill area of Blowing Rock on Wednesday morning. Well, once we move out, additional work will happen inside the house to replace the 1961 electrical system that's in the house, as well as plumbing, some of which exists still from 1961. And so the home will be renovated inside as well. And the hope is that we can move back in to a really new looking home at the end of May of 2022. So I'm grateful to Kim, to Mike Capristo, to Gary Scott and Jim Kroll, who are a part of that Mance Renovation Committee Catherine Scott and Mabel Davis have been doing the design work to pick all of the things that go inside the home as well. So grateful to all of them. Ask for your continued prayers for this part of the process, but it's exciting that work has already begun on this campaign. If you haven't wandered over to see what's happening over there and you've seen the manse before, you won't hardly even believe (laughs) what's there now. It's incredible how much has has already taken place. If you have questions, you can ask him or you can ask me, and we'll be glad to answer those questions after the service today. I'm going to invite you to join me now in a time of transition into our time of worship. If you are able, wherever you are seated, to place your feet securely there on the floor, that helps to ground us in where we are and to remind us of our being grounded in God's presence 
And as you ground yourself, I invite you to draw in a deep cleansing breath. Breathing in the peace of Christ. And breathing out your stress, your worry, or concerns. Maybe it's the to-do list. And in the time of this prelude, I invite you to continue to draw in those deep cleansing breaths and asking God to help you to use that time to prepare your heart and your mind for the worship of God. Let us worship God together. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord shall be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord shall be praised. please rise and join me in the responsive call to worship in the bulletin. Praise the Lord. Yes, give praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord now and forever. Everywhere, 
from east to west, praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, now and forever. Let us worship the Lord our God. Please remain standing. Our hymn is 665, As Morning Dawns. <clears throat> As morning dawns, Lord, hear our cry. O sovereign God, now hear our sigh. As first light brings the sun's warm rays, accept our sacrifice of For you, Lord, the wicked fall, and none shall dwell within your hall. The proud shall never gain a place, nor even live to see your face. Your steadfast love shall welcome all who seek your house and on you call. Oh, lead us, Lord, in righteousness as though this day Bless the righteous Lord, forever be your name adored. The proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Trusting in God's faithfulness and compassion, let us confess our sin before God and one another first together and then in silence. Let us pray. Sometimes, O oh God, we forget people or we toss them aside the difficult ones, the needy ones, the ones that are hard to spend time with, the ones who confront us. And sometimes when we do this, it's not really about the other people, but about us. We are uncomfortable, or we feel guilty, or we follow brighter, shinier people, or we worry about what will make us look good. We are in such need of your forgiveness, merciful God. We need to be forgiven for our sin, for our mistakes, for mistaking what the world values with what you value. Help us to see more clearly, love more dearly, and follow Jesus more nearly. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Friends, hear and believe the good news. The mercy of the Lord our God has no limits. In Jesus Christ, we are loved, forgiven, and freed. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. Um, I saw Joshua come in. Joshua, do you want to come up here for time with children? Yay! We don't always have anybody at 9 o'clock, so I'm glad you're here. I'll meet you over at the chair. How's school going? 
Michael. Well, I, uh, if you've been following anything in the, that, that Pastor Kathy's been talking about lately at church, she's been talking about prayer. And today, she's going to talk about praying for other people. And so, I have a little trick I'm going to teach you today, okay? And actually, it's not just for kids. It actually helps me, too, when I think about praying for other people. Because sometimes I find myself getting confused, you know, or I, I, anyway, this is kind of an organized way to do it. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to put your hands in kind of a prayer position like this. You want to come stand beside me, or would you rather sit? Your choice. Awesome. Okay, then everybody can see you, and you can help me this way. Okay, let's make our hands like a prayer. All right? Now, which finger is the closest one to you right now of all your fingers? That's right, your thumb. So what we want to remember, the thumb is the one that's closest to us, closest to our heart right now. So the first people that we want to think about praying for in this little trick are the ones that are really, really close to us. So we're going to think about praying for our moms and our dads, our grandparents, maybe brothers and sisters, and those that are really close to us, okay? The next finger, sometimes called the pointer finger, that's to help us remember to pray for those who point us in the right direction. So this would be our teachers, our pastor, the people who point us to safety, like, um, like firemen and police officers and people like that. They point us in the right direction, okay? Look at the next finger. That's the tallest one of all. So when we think about praying for those people, we want to think about our leaders. We want to think about the people that are kind of over us, and not just the leaders of our country, but leaders all over the world, even those that can seem really cruel and harsh. They especially need our prayers. So we're going to pray for those people. Now, look at the next fingers. That ring finger, sometimes called the index finger, some people claim that that's the weakest finger of all the five on our hand. And I kind of think it might be. I kind of played around with that and thought, yeah, I think that's the weakest one. That is a reminder to pray for all the people around us who are weak and hurting and really need our prayers. People who are sick. Can you think of some people that might be hurting right now that you could pray for? That would be what we remember there. And then finally, the little finger down there. You know, in the Bible it says, do not think of yourself more highly than others. So when by the time we get to our little finger, though, we want to actually pray for ourselves. So Joshua, when, if you use this little trick to pr next time you do your prayers, when you get to the end, to the little finger, you're going to say, Dear God, pray. I'm praying for myself. You know what I need. Um, be with me all the time. Do you think you can, will that help you when you pray next, when you say your prayers next time? Do you think that might help you? Awesome. Thank you. Let's pray together right quick. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the gift of prayer, for our ability to have conversations with you every day. Help us to always remember to pray for others and to pray for ourselves. In Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. Thank you. I'm thinking with that excellent time with the children, I might not need another sermon on prayer. <laughs> that was great. I'm gonna re I've never heard that, and I'm going to remember that too. Well, as we prepare to hear God's word for us this morning, I'm going to invite you to join me in prayer again. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, our God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, we pray that you will help to open your word for us this morning. Will you speak to us? And may you speak through me a word for us to hear this day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to make sure that as you came in, did everybody get a piece of paper, a little, that looks like this? Because at the end of this, you didn't. Okay. I'm, we're going to pray it together at the end, so I want to make sure everybody has one.
Do you need one? Okay. Sorry. Thank you for helping pass them around. So hold on to that. And at the end of the sermon, we're going to join in this prayer together. So hold on to that. As Lou has already shared this morning, we continue and actually we conclude a short three-week sermon series on prayer. As I have shared the last two Sundays, this sermon series developed a bit out of necessity, I think, on my own part. You may have heard this saying before that we preachers always preach the sermons that we need to hear. I don't know if anybody's ever told you that before, but that's what they say, and I think there's a lot of truth in it. And I have said this the last two Sundays, like many of you, I have been feeling weary and wondering what to pray for. It seems like a challenge right now with so much happening both globally, nationally, and then I know for many of us, individually in our own lives and families. And earlier this summer, I had been carrying around this little book of prayer. I mentioned it the first week, The Beautiful Work of Learning to Pray by the Reverend Dr. James Howell. And it all just sort of came together a few weeks ago. I said, huh, I think this is an invitation to talk together about prayer for a few Sundays. Prayer is central to us as followers of Jesus. And that's true when everything seems right and like everything's going perfectly, and also when it feels like things are falling apart. Prayer is one of those few practices that is at the core of who we are as people of faith. We believe that prayer makes a difference. Prayer connects us to God. Prayer shapes and changes us. And... Prayer unites us with one another, with all of God's children, and with all that God has created. And this morning, our focus is on that third aspect of prayer, that prayer unites us with one another, with all of God's children, and with the entirety of God's creation. Prayer helps us to see beyond ourselves beyond our own worries and concerns, and to connect us to the needs, the hurts, and the celebrations of others. This, to me, seems very important as this pandemic rages on and the divisions among us seem wider and broader. We are connected to one another, to all of God's children, and to all that God has made. It feels appropriate to me as well that this aspect of prayer is our focus on this weekend as we commemorate the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 tragedy. As I have listened and read and watched this weekend, I have been reminded of a time when our collective thoughts and prayers extended far beyond our own little worlds, our own families, to this whole country and the world. That tragedy made us look up, and it forced us to look out. This morning, we turn to the Bible's prayer book, the book of Psalms. If you are ever lacking your own words to pray, pick up the Bible, open it right there to the middle, and I am certain that one of those 150 prayers will speak to how you are feeling and what you need in that moment. The Psalms express every emotion that we could ever have. It seems like it would not have been right to preach a sermon series on prayer and not read from the book of Psalms. Like many aspects, Psalm 113 came to me in this sermon series. It was a psalm I didn't think that I was very familiar with. 
but I actually was. Dave reminded me of that earlier in the week. It's a psalm of praise, a psalm of praise to God. But it also, towards the end, helps us to focus on the other, particularly some of the marginalized at the time that this psalmist was writing. This is a psalm that helps us focus both on God and on others. I will be reading from the Common English translation, so it's slightly different than what's in the Pew Bible before you. This is Psalm 113. Praise the Lord. You who serve the Lord, praise. Praise the Lord's name. Let the Lord's name be blessed from now until forever from now. From sunrise to sunset, let the Lord's name be praised. The Lord is high over all the nations. God's glory is higher than the skies. Who could possibly compare to the Lord our God? God rules from on high. He has to come down to even see heaven and earth. God lifts up the poor from the dirt and raises up the needy from the garbage pile to seat them with leaders, with the leaders of his own people. God nests the once barren woman at home, now a joyful mother with children. Praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, may the name of the Lord be praised. I already said I didn't think I was that familiar with Psalm 113, but I was. How many of us, after worshiping online at the beginning of this pandemic, and for the first, I don't know what, six or eight months probably, could sing what Dave and Eric sang for us this morning? Those of you who were worshiping during that time know that that was our sung call to worship at the beginning of every worship service, month after month. And I know for my children and me, that became a comfort. I, I remember telling Dave one time we were driving in the car and one of my children just started singing that psalm. That is a sung version of Psalm 113. So when Dave and I were communicating early in the week about planning for this morning, he said, you know that from the rising of the sun is a paraphrase of Psalm 113. And this psalm emphasizes the three points in this series on prayer. There are many aspects of prayer that could be the focus of a sermon series on prayer. We could have talked about the types of prayer, or how to pray, or where to pray. But in this series we have focused on how prayer orients us and how prayer affects us. Psalm 113 begins with praise to God, acknowledging that all prayer begins with God and connects us to the Almighty, the one in whom we live and move and have our being. And it continues acknowledging God's love for the marginalized and God's willingness to help and to uplift them. In this psalm prayer, we read about God's love and concern for those on the margins, an acknowledgement of the other, of the concerns of those beyond one's immediate community. Prayer connects us to God. It shapes, and it changes us. And prayer helps to connect us to the needs and the concerns of others. If our prayers are simply prayers for ourselves, then we have missed a critical aspect of prayer. While many of our prayers may begin with our own concerns about self, our prayers always need to move beyond our individual and beyond our own needs and concerns 
and also focus on the needs and concerns of others, of our family and our friends, our community, our nation, and our world. And as we are increasingly being reminded by our own creation care team here at Rumpel, and with these multiple national disasters and natural disasters that have been affecting our world and our nation every week, our outward-facing prayers must also include all that God has created as well. Intentional time in prayer each and every day helps to get me out of the center, out of only my own thoughts and my own actions. Because prayer reminds us that God is at the center and that we inhabit this vast planet with so many other people, animals and plants, all of who and which God also loves. Prayer helps us to be aware of the concerns of others, to care, to love, and to work for change. Christian speaker and writer Danielle Strickland, whose latest book is entitled Better Together, How Women and Men Can Heal the Divide and Work Together to Transform the Future, and who also hosts a monthly virtual prayer gathering where she invites people from all over the world to come together and pray together. Posted this recently on Instagram. Pray that as we catch the vision of a different future, we will have the audacious faith and tenacious actions to live it out together. I love this invitation from Danielle Strickland. Prayer is not a passive activity. Prayer centers us in God. It shapes us. It connects us to other people and thus invites us into action. This morning, I want to invite you to join me in prayer. And now I want you to pull out your little prayer that you have there. This is a prayer that was written by Rumpel's own Hope Squires. The impetus for this prayer was our It Is Time campaign, but it is not a prayer about a capital campaign. When the prayer team met a couple of weeks ago, we agreed that any prayer we would write would need to have a much broader focus, connecting us to God, to one another, and living into our vision and mission as a church. As we continue to live with this pandemic, as we mark the anniversary of 9-11, as we try to process natural disasters and human suffering around the world, as the body of Christ, we are invited to turn together to God in prayer. We pray not only for ourselves, not only for this church, but that God will help us to be faithful in our calling as disciples of Jesus Christ, both individually and together. Let us pray. I invite you to join me in prayer together. Almighty God, thank you for loving us and bringing us together as one church body. Please fill us with your Holy Spirit so we may answer your call for each of us here at Rumpel. We as a church may sometimes feel too small in a small corner of your world to accomplish the mighty work you have planned for us. When doubts creep in, when thoughts arise that the task is too great and we feel too weak, remind us of David defeating Goliath. Remind us of Esther's bravery in saving her people. Remind us of the boy who gave his meager lunch of five loaves and two fish to feed the 5,000. We know that with your blessing and guidance, all things are possible. Please direct our ways and give us courage, wisdom, and holy imagination so that our small church 
may be an undeniable beacon of your goodness and love in these mountains and beyond. Amen. May it be so. Amen. Jacques Berthier of the Iona community wrote a series of meditations that are intended to be sung over and over and to allow individuals a time for prayer. You may use words or not. I invite you now to stand and join with me in reaffirming our faith using the ancient words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we turn to an intentional time of prayers, of intercession and thanksgiving, I want to just call your attention to a few of those prayers for our focus this morning, and we hope in the coming week. We want to surround Lee Derby with our prayers. We learned on Friday morning that his mother joined the Church Triumphant June, and so we surround Lee and his whole family with our prayers for comfort and peace in their time of grief. We want to continue to remember Marion Stadler. She's been on our prayer list, I guess, for a couple months now. Broke both of the bones in um, the lower part of her leg earlier in the summer. She has a new cast on now that will be on at least through the middle of October. So we want to remember her. And also want to remember her husband, Don, who is undergoing tests for some recent health concerns that have developed for him. 
I have good news to share this morning, and that is that Janet Goodman, who we have been praying for for a number of weeks, came home on Friday after nearly three weeks in the hospital with COVID. She is still on oxygen, but stronger and doing better, and so we want to pray for Janet's healing, but she is so grateful to be home and shared with me that she has felt the prayers of this church family. And of course, we want to continue to remember folks in California and Louisiana and New Jersey and Tennessee and so many other places as they continue to figure out how to rebuild after natural disasters. And I know that we have many prayers that we lift up for our friends and family. So I invite us in a moment of silence to lift up prayers now. Amen. I wanted us to remember people in our personal circles and other circumstances that we were mindful of this morning. And I want to now offer an intentional prayer of remembrance for the 9-11 tragedy. This is a prayer adapted from one on the United Methodist Church Discipleship Ministries webpage. Will you join me again in prayer? We remember God of history and remembrance. We remember. We remember when the towers fell and the Pentagon burned and the plane crashed into a field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, and nearly 3,000 lives were lost. We remember the dust and the smoke, the despair and the grief. We remember that sense of vulnerability and shock. We remember the numbness that overwhelmed us as we watched our screens for hours and hours, waiting for an explanation that never came. We remember. We remember God of hope and presence. We remember the heroes who rushed to help, who guided the wounded, who opened their homes to total strangers trapped in foreign airports who rose to overwhelm those who held death in their hands. We remember the hours and the days of binding wounds and healing hurts, giving comfort, drying tears. We remember words of support and compassion from nations far and wide. We remember in part because we see the ripples of that tragic day continue to impact our world 20 years later. We grieve with allies today as our allies grieved with us, and together we wonder if there will ever be an end to violence, to war, to hatred. We remember, and we grieve our world's inability to learn the things that make for peace. We call on you now in our remembrance, O God of justice and peace. Give us the will to truly pray that your kingdom may come on earth as it is in heaven. May we honor the lives that were lost that horrible day. May we give thanks for those who served and saved, rendered aid and assistance. May we give comfort to those who live with loss still today. May we give thanks for the unity, for the common voice, and the common purpose that we shared 20 years ago and hope to achieve again in this day and time. May you help us to build what has been torn, mend what has been broken. May we shine your love when hate seems to reign. May we bear witness to the cause of peace in the name and for the sake of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
in an effort to remain as safe as possible, we are not passing offering plates in worship, but there are offering plates at each entry of the sanctuary. Each Sunday, we are invited to respond to God's goodness and generosity to us with our tithes, our offerings, and the gift of our time and talents. As we enjoy this morning's offertory, may we each consider how we are invited to respond to God's goodness and generosity to us. much we, as we enjoy our inward moment of prayer and worship together in our sanctuary, we eventually have to turn back out. So our sending hymn will allow us to transition into from worship back into the world. I'm going to use live so God can use me, number 700, and stand as you're able.
forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Return no person evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. May the blessing of God, the Father Almighty, Jesus Christ, his Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you today and forevermore. Amen.